Hey, what's up guys? This is my video about rifle scope magnification. Okay, let's eliminate some of this stuff right off the top. Price. Figure out what your price range is. Generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, the more expensive the scope is, the higher in magnification you can go without giving up too awful much. When you go to a higher magnification scope, the lenses are thicker. Now, when the lenses get thicker, the coatings have to be better and the lenses have to be ground to much more tight tolerances. But most scopes stop, even the target scopes, up around 45 or 50 power because that's as good as you can get to where the magnification is overloaded by the poor resolution. Now, the lower the price of the scope, the lower the magnification you can expect this in. If you're looking in a budget scope range, say $300 is your price range. I'm gonna want a two to seven or a three to nine. Now, if you jump up in price a little bit, say six or $700, then you can start getting up in something like the four to 16, uh, six to 18, something that's approaching 20 power and still stay in this price range. You still get really, really good resolution. Now it sucks, but here's the truth. If you're gonna get up something that's 24 power and higher, truth is when you get to the highest end of the scope, it's really gonna start getting dark. The resolution's gonna go down fast and it's gonna be hard to justify the extra magnification for how poor the picture's gonna look downrange. And it's also gonna show off any chromatic aberration. It just makes it worse as the magnification gets higher. So think about your budget. Think about what you actually need the scope to do. If you need it to hunt with, you don't need a 24 power scope. Here in this kind of a timber, a four or a six power with excellent resolution and great light gathering capability is a lot more important than how high the magnification will get. I don't need to just see fur in the scope if I'm shooting at a deer. I'd like to be able to see the whole deer. That, that way I have some daylight around it so I can see where the hell I'm actually aiming at. Less is more. Anytime you can get away with a lower power scope, do that. And if you're like most guys and you like to go to the range and you wanna see where your bullet holes are hidden at 100 yards and a low power scope won't show you, buy a $100 spotter. It'll save you a lot of headaches once you get in the timber. Now, if you're out west, you're doing really long range shooting or you're out shooting gongs at 1,000 yards, something like this in the middle of the daylight, then the resolution may not be such a big deal. For me personally, I would much rather give up power than resolution. I want my scope to be nice and clear. I'd rather look at 100 yards and see everything really sharp on eight power than to look at 100 yards and it's a fuzzy, distorted image on 20 power. All right, two other things to think about on going to a really high power scope. One is the length and one is the weight. The weight scopes are built on the inside. The only way to get the magnification really high is the scope is almost always gonna be longer and it definitely is gonna be heavier. It's got thicker glass inside of it, so the weight's gonna go with the glass. So that's something else to think about when you're getting ready to go to high magnification. It doesn't do any good to have a super lightweight rifle and the scope weighs three pounds. Something else, guys don't talk about this, but a really heavy scope, unless you're shooting off a bipod, I cannot tell you how many times I've done it and seen it done. A guy sets his rifle in the sandbags at the range. It's so top heavy with the overpowered scope, it flips off the bags. And believe me, they always find a rock, concrete, steel, or something to land on. It's going to tear something up every single time. And it's always these huge overpowered scopes that make a gun flip off the bags. If it hasn't happened to you, you're incredibly lucky. But if you start buying high-powered scopes, it's going to happen, sure as shit. All right, now I'm going to touch real quickly on second focal plane and first focal plane. For guys that don't know, on second focal plane, the reticle remains the same regardless of the zoom of the scope. On first focal plane, the reticle grows as you zoom the scope in and out. Now, now something that's kind of unique to the United States, when we do buy first focal plane, we buy the really thin ones. If you look through a European scope that has a German number four reticle, believe me, even on the lowest setting, you can see it easily. But for hunting purposes, I don't need to be able to shoot a gnat, but I need the light gathering capability that the lower power scope is gonna give me over the higher power scope. Another thing about first focal plane, a lot of guys don't think about when it comes to magnification. When you turn the magnification up on a first focal plane, all those reference points you were worried about start disappearing because the reticle is growing and you're only seeing the first couple. So the only way to use all of them is to turn the magnification down 
If that's the case, then you might want to look at something like a fixed power scope. Now, of all the scopes out there, the fixed power scopes are almost always the clearest. If you've never seen a Smith Bender 4, 6, or 8 power scope, or Savorsky 10 power, a Collis 8 power, then you haven't seen what real state-of-the-art looks like. I've got an 8 by 56 at home that at 100 yards you can look at the paper and you can see the texture in the paper. And believe me, you can pick up every bullet hole because the resolution is so incredibly high. Something else to think about on the fixed powers, they have less glass in them. So the less glass that image is having to go through, the better the image is gonna be. On my hunting rifles, I have an eight by 56 Collis and I have a six by 42 Miopta. Guys, generally when folks reach out to me and they're looking for something like a six to 24 or a four to 16, they can't decide which one to get, get the four to 16, even if the price is the same. Now, a lot of times guys think, why would I do that? Or why would I not pay 20 extra dollars and not get the highest magnification? You're getting more magnification, but in any scope series, in anybody's scope line, as the magnification goes up, the lenses are not getting better. If you buy Zeiss Conquest V4, which is a really good scope, the lower powered Conquest is better than the higher powered optically. It's just a fact. The lenses are gonna have the same coatings, they're gonna be made to the same specs, it's just they're thicker, so it's not gonna look as good. Think about it like this. If you're looking at me through this camera and I started putting up sheets of glass, perfectly clear glass, after a while, the image is gonna start going downhill because it's having to go through all that glass. The light, the colors, and everything are going to start dispersing and they're not going to come straight through the glass. That's what causes chromatic aberration. So when the glass is not as thick and there's less of it, the image is going to be better. Thanks for watching, guys. If you don't mind, check out some of my other videos. I've got a lot of these scope videos that I'm making to try to help guys make good buying decisions, and I hope this one helped you in some way.